Good evening, everyone. I am so excited about this night of inspiration. And initially, I had planned to do exercises and guide you through things. And we have taken in so much information so far. And this really is a night, Felicia phrased it fabulously, just to sit back and be inspired by these three people that I have asked to stand before you. And these people easily could have been on the main uh, stage where they're delivering content and sharing their work. They're doing such fabulous work out in the world. These three people are also people that I know their stories and uh, the adversity they've overcome and the way that they have given meaning to that. We've been talking a lot about that, that we are a culmination of our experiences, good and bad. And it is what we do in giving meaning to those to go out and do our life's work and make that bigger impact. And so I really wanted an opportunity for these three people to do something different than they tend to do. They tend to stand up in front of corporations and they speak and they train and they have such fabulous uh, stories of overcoming personal and professional adversity. So tonight is a night, um, we'll have some time to network and have some refreshments, but tonight's just a night to sit back and take in their stories. And like I said, the, the world so desperately needs inspiration. And so fuel your tanks this weekend, just fill up and they go share that with others, all right? It is so needed right now. So our first speaker is my friend Josh Hines. I met Josh through Bob Berg, again, uh, the connector. And I interviewed Josh for my 12 Factors in Action. And Josh was at the peak of his sales game. I think some of this may come out. I, I haven't scripted anything. I'm not sure what's gonna come out. I just know uh, what's meant to come out will come out tonight and you'll hear what you need to hear. And Josh was really at the top of his sales game and he had, um, uh, he was, had experienced a stuttering uh, block, he called it, and, and he said, think stuttering on steroids. He, he just couldn't even get um, words out. And he remembered, he told me the story of this woman he was on the phone with, and he was trying so hard to even finish his sentence. And, and she was trying to finish that sentence for him and say, oh, you know, honey, whatever you're selling, I'll buy. You know, I'm just trying to help you. Um, but he, he grew up with great guidance on uh, running your own business and entrepreneurship. He certainly has that spirit within him. And he was on moving up in his sales game and was, uh, he had already had Tourette's syndrome and, and working with things and he had the stuttering block. And so he thought, and this is really what, what grabbed me, if I can't speak, what can I do? He is a master at, at if I can't do it this way, then I'm gonna figure out this way and this way. And, and then once I experience this new way of doing, I'm unconfident, it's new territory, but boy, I remember when I did that, so I'm gonna borrow that confidence. I'm gonna keep track, I'm gonna have this inspiration file where I remember all the great stuff I did and just keep borrowing that confidence until I find my way. And, and Josh taught me that. It's just a great tool that I've shared with some clients. And um, he really went on then from not being able to talk and if he can't talk, he can write, is what he found. And he has gone on in the heyday of the internet to touch millions, and I'm not exaggerating, millions of lives through internet, through personal development websites. Uh, when Yahoo was at its uh, heyday in this area, Josh was up there on top. And he, he still has a lot of websites and a lot of influence where he has <laughs> tools out there and also making a living this way. But he is making a big impact and uh, I invite Josh up front to share what he's going to share. Thank you. Mine. I need a hug, though. Hey. That's the price of attending. Oh, you bet. <laughs> so, if you knew me at different points in my life, uh, how can I say this except to say that I would be the last person in the world that you would think would be doing this, not just speaking, sharing my thoughts. If you knew me at a time in my life where the phone would ring and I would be scared to death to answer the phone and it was, you know, it was like this thought that would come in my mind and would say, and I would be afraid that they would think I was going to be a prank caller when I answered the phone. And it's bad enough when you can't, you know, when you call somebody and you can't answer the phone. But imagine what's worse is when they call you and they think that you're prank calling them. <laughs> See, so it was a real challenge. So. From there, and I'm going to move around a lot too, so I'm going to, I'm going to warn you guys, your eyeballs are going to be like yeah. all over the place, okay? I get excited to be able to do this because it's, as much a, it's really a gift for me coming from a place where 
and I'm not and I'm not overplaying it. Literally, where I could barely spit out what I wanted to say at some at different points in my life. So I will take you if you'll allow me. Will you allow me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to take you through some stories in my life, but you got to promise me one thing. You got to promise me that you're not going to get caught up in the oh, how could he suffer through this? Because you have your own adversities, and this is not a matter of me comparing mine to yours and you comparing yours to mine. It's that we've all, on some level, can deal with challenges that have to be overcome if we want to do what we're all here to do, to make an impact in this world, to create our best life. A lot of times, now, another thing I want you to think about, when I take you through my stories, I want you to remember without a doubt, trust me, if I can figure out a way that life works itself out and I figure out the skills it takes to do this, you guys can do what I've done times, you can't even imagine what you're capable of doing. But it does take being uncomfortable sometimes. I love what Dr. Molly talked about with action. You don't always have to get everything right, but you gotta take steps. And I always say it like this, amazingly, when you step out, even if you don't know all the exact right steps. Life has an incredible way of filling in the details for you. Can everybody, if you, if you think hard enough, can you, can you think back to a time where that's happened? You really didn't know how it was going to happen, but if you're really honest with yourself, and maybe you're going through a challenge right now, but if you're really honest with yourself, you'll look back and you say, I had to go through that to get here. Okay, so if you'll allow me to, I'll take you through, again, some stories in my life. So I, if, if adversity was a train, I got off to a pretty... I got on train pretty early. I was held back twice in kindergarten. By the time I was in first grade, I was diagnosed with a learning disability in math. Um, not to make light of it, but I still don't count my own change at the back of the room. Don't know all my multiplication tables. But Molly talked about supportive parents. Fortunately, my mother and father wouldn't allow me to buy into this thing. I, they wouldn't let me be the dumb kid in school. So they encouraged me, and now they wanted me to learn my multiplication tables, but it wasn't in the cards. Maybe I was just a little slicker than they were and I got away with it. But the point was, they taught me how powerful calculators were. Isn't that an amazing thing? And uh, another thing that taught me a good skill, and, I, and being exposed to entrepreneurship, so one thing my father said, he said, you know, Josh, he said, beauty of things is you can hire smarter people than you. And people that know me will tell you that that's really served me well and they also said it's not very difficult to do. Now, I'll let you guys be the judge as to whether that's true or not. But hire smarter people, work with smarter people. Um, so I had that little adversity. By the time I was about eight or nine years old, I was diagnosed with what's called Tourette's syndrome. Is anybody familiar with that? Honest, honest answer. When you first heard that, how many people thought I was going to start cursing at you? <laughs> I'm not making light of it. It's okay because people think that. Actually, that's a really small... Um, percentage of people that have Tourette's that do that, but it is, it can happen, it is a symptom. It's always been mild for me up until a certain point. So, kind of backing up, and, I, and trust me, you'll, you'll hear when it stopped being mild. That was the, what Molly talked about, and we'll get into that, and again, that's when you're going to have to really hold up to your promise that I asked for earlier, where you take the focus off of what I had to go through, and you apply it to your own life, okay? As I'm telling you these stories, I want you to also, I'm going to also take you through maybe a challenge and then I'm going to try to immediately show you how I had to go through that. How by ex going through that experience, it not only served me, but made me better. And, there, and I believe that. And I believe that on, you know, through my faith and spiritual love, but I also believe it because I've, of the work that I've done over the years, I've seen it happen time and time and time again. But the slip side of that is you have, to, you have to kind of accept on the front end that there's a little truth to that. Because sadly, I know a lot of people, they got the lesson so close to them, but for whatever reason, they keep buying into this myth that life's just trying to hold, put their foot on their neck, you know? And that's just not the case. So, take you back into my life. Diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome, it was somewhat fairly mild. We ended up, by the time I was, when I was about 11, 12 years old, my father, just to kind of paint you a picture of our financial situation, our family, father was very good in business. He was a very good salesperson. We had a, we had a pretty much a thriving business in our town. 
on a b bad business deal that went bad, we had a financial adversity on our hands. To tell you how much of a financial adversity it was, we were so broke that, in fairness to my father, when he first bought the car from my mother, coming from a brand new vehicle, it had a reverse. Well, you know where this is going, right? So for a year, while they were working their way back, my mother drove a car with no reverse. Now that's a challenge, but, but, but who has teenagers or kids here? And you know how difficult those kids can be when, they, when they're like, they, want, they don't want to, you know, they they're embarrassed real easy. Yeah. Well, imagine your mother's trying to do the best she can do and she drives the car into a parking space and somebody, lo and behold, takes the other parking space. And all of a sudden you find yourself having to push the car out of the thing. That is a challenge. On the flip side of that, my father, and this was a huge lesson for me too, okay, this was a huge lesson for me. While we were going through that financial hardship, my father had the idea to start another business. And he started that business on our kitchen table, literally. And, and that showed, that was, that was probably one of the key things in my life that told me that, that I still take into this, to, you know, still take with me today, and that is that you have a choice to stay stuck, and if you make that choice, that's your choice. You, you, that is a legitimate, you can feel as bad as you want about the situation, but only one thing is going to drive you to where you want to go. And I saw that firsthand, and as a result, I've taken that throughout my life. Even in the hardest moments where I could, you know, where I could barely spit out what I wanted to say in dealing with those challenges, I, I had that little bit of an idea in the back of my head. And to this day, it still serves me. Um, so, another thing that was really interesting about what happened was really cool about where a terrible situation can really be a blessing. And, 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 and this was absolutely a blessing. When, about the time I was 15 years old, I had an opportunity to work in our, in, in our family business. Now, we were still in startup, but at this point it was no longer on the kitchen table. We actually had a, a little office and what have you, so it was growing. It wasn't a big time. We weren't fixing to compete for the Inc. 500 award, but, but, we were, but we were getting somewhere. And so I, my father, coming from his sales background, keeping in mind that we didn't have the extra money to, to pay me minimum wage, so my father comes and he says, Josh, this is what you're going to do. We're going to write you a script. I had no idea. I'm 15 years old. I have no idea what a script is. But we wrote a, we wrote a sales script out. And he said, here's this reverse index. Because we didn't really have the internet like you think about now. I mean, we did, but not really. It wasn't like you could go to whitepages.com. We had these things called reverse indexes. And basically, you had addresses, and you matched them to the names. And that's the way we prospected. So at 15 years old, I have a sales bill. I have the product. And basically, my job was to call on, call on prospective clients and sell the appointment, qualify them, sell the appointment, and at that point, because I was 15 years old, hand them over to either my father or one of the other salespeople, and they would close the deal. And by the way, you're going to be working on straight commission. How many people, if, if, if I offered you an, an incredible opportunity, I said, but by the way, you have to wait to get paid from somebody else. We're not giving you a paycheck. How many of you think you could, this audience is going to be a little different. I think a lot of y'all would probably you wouldn't be here if you weren't somebody that maybe you only got your hand up halfway, but you'd get there. Well, most people wouldn't because it's, you know. I, I have to be honest with you. The only reason I did it is because I didn't know it was supposed to be hard. <laughs> so I did it. And I'd like to tell you that the first time I did it, it was like everybody was just, let me get that offer. Let me take that offer. It wasn't. It was like, no, 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 no. But then, yes. And that's all it took. That's where you, you just get a little win in you. And it was like, oh, my God. You know, and I'll tell you, it was a surprise to my father. I mean, I'm sure it was like, I'm sure he was just pacifying my mother at that point. To, you know, but, but it worked. And, and I didn't go out gangbusters, but eventually that little bit of success, that's why action is so important. You don't have to knock home runs, but the little actions. And Molly said it so great. She said it so fantastic when she was talking about it in her presentation. The little actions, you know, it, See, I always think of it this way. Success begets success. And you have to be in the game. You don't even have to be in the game in a big way. You, don't even, you know what I mean? If you stay in the game consistently, you'll have big plays. And I'm, I'm going to try to spare you all the sports, you know, little things. But so, that was huge in my life. Now, I was actually got better. Another big thing, too, 
was one of the people that was one of the salespeople in our company told me, he kind of took me to the side. He said, Josh, you know, you're doing pretty good, but, but here's, here's something I want you to think about. It's just going to be your choice whether you buy into this or not. He said, Josh, he said, you can get good over time with sales. You can pick up some things, and if you stay in the game long enough, you'll get good. He said, or you can choose to be great. And I said, well, great, right? Who wouldn't say great, especially when you're like 15 years old, you know, you think you got some success. So he said, you got to start reading. You got to buy into this thing called personal development. Personal development wasn't, it was so far off of my radar at 15 years old, but it was introduced to me. So mom, we ended up at the uh, Sam's and we're looking through the little book aisle. I remember like it was yesterday. And there's a book by Zig Ziglar called Over the Top. M most of y'all have, have, you may not know of Over the Top. It's actually kind of like the, the sequel, if you will, to the famous, you know, See You at the Top. Incredible book. I was I bought into personal development, hook, line, sinker, thing. I, I bought into it, but I did. And I started seeing some changes. I went from, from you know, my, give you a little sales analogy, because one of the things that got me to where I was doing well closing was I learned naturally that the more I did it, the better I got. You know, so my ratio went better. Well, all of a sudden, it just wasn't even, it, it was like going from, okay, you're going to get good, you know, getting good over time to like putting myself on the space-time continuum or something for, for lack of a kind of a take it in a weird direction. But it was like, you mean somebody's done this before? Somebody's been here before? And so it was big for me. So I went through learning different things. My, my interest in, in uh, entrepreneurship and business exploding. I felt, you know, I, a lot of ways I thought I was ahead of my peer group. Maybe 15, 16, 17 years old I was. Who knows? But I felt like I was really ahead of the game. And then 18 years old, now I have to tell you first, this is kind of hard. You can do the research behind this if you want to on your own time, but the interesting thing about Tourette's syndrome is it's not like most disorders. If you get, if you get a symptom, you don't necessarily have that for life. Your symptoms can wax and wane. Um, so, for everybody that's kind of been like, that, we, that I've spoke with, or maybe I haven't really, you don't know my story, and you kind of thought I was like the creepy guy with the tie on that was winking at all your wives and girlfriends, you can all take like a collective sigh of relief, because that's just who I am, right? It's just, I have a little, I have a little blinking tick and different things. Maybe, maybe five or six, ten years ago, I wouldn't have had that. I had something a lot worse, and that's what I'm about to tell you all. I went, so I'm sitting there getting ready to make a call. Like, I mean, this was like old hat. I'd done it time and time again, calling a client, telling them what I had to offer, allowing, not selling them something they didn't want, but as Bob would say, sharing value with them, letting them make their own decisions. It was old hat. It was simple for me, except this time uh, I, I couldn't spit out a word I wanted to say, literally. And it, and it wasn't just in my mind. It was like it was, I could, I could, it was the weirdest situation I could describe because it was like I was looking above and I could see exactly what I wanted to say, Everything's, except I couldn't spit it out. I couldn't start the conversation. And, and anybody that, this kind of gets a little more, you know, psychological understanding, but, but I'll, I'll concur that probably some of that was because I didn't know how to, to control that situation. I didn't know how to calm myself down at that moment. I started, what was I think even worse than the actual blocking tick was my bout with anxiety. Anxiety to the point, literally, that as I mentioned before, Phones scared the mess out of me. I mean, the thought of them. Something that I had actually mastered, as far as much as you can, done very well with, scared the mess out of me. And I stopped. I've got a, I've got a motto that, I, that says, you know, it's your life, live big. I wasn't the first to, you know, I live by that now because I had a very real time in my life where I lived really small. And I, you know what? I accept that I live small. In a lot of ways, I was trying to do the best I could do but I could do better. I could do better. And so, all of a sudden, everything that I thought that I knew, everything I thought that I took for granted, you know, the very fact that, you know, a lot of my peer group was just getting ready to go to school, I was making bucks, you know what I mean? I was, I was ahead of the game. It was, bam, it was out the window, or so I thought. And, and whether it was or not, whether I could have done something differently, was irrelevant because that was my reality where I thought it was in that moment. And so from there, 
I, I shrunk back in a lot of ways. That kind of stayed in the game, what have you. Several years later, uh, my father passed away unexpectedly and had massive heart attack. And, and if, as if that was not a challenge enough, here we are. My sister worked in the business as well. Essentially, we were left with a company that was not as small as it was at one time. So we stayed involved. I was, I was limiting myself. But I was doing the best that I could do, and so I was able to help out in other capacities. A year later, I had an opportunity to go out and do something else. Went to, this, is, this is where sometimes just doing the best, you, I want you to cue in on this lesson. When you're, sometimes when you're doing the best you can do, even if you feel like you're doing nothing, just doing the best you can do, doing something, can make a huge impact. And it may not be obvious, it may be anything but obvious, but if you give it enough time, and if you buy in on the front end of that belief that there's a lesson, that this adversity is not just meant to keep its heel on my head gasping for water and that there's something there, it will reveal itself. So in this case, had an, I moved to Louisville, Kentucky, didn't feel like I was doing much at the time. Well, saw an ad in the paper, for, and, and I've got to put the time frame on, this was around like, uh, we're talking 1994, 95. And so this particular inter internet company in the area, I guess they're, they're marketing idea was we'll teach business owners how to design websites and of course the whole idea was that they have their own businesses to run so they're gonna say oh to heck with this here you build the website well here I was I didn't have anything but time on my hands so I actually learned enough I never became a master website designer at all but I learned enough to know kinda what I was doing at that time so I ended up coming back to Tuscaloosa Alabama didn't, didn't really do much with that except that I had that skill came back to Tuscaloosa Alabama where I'm from um, and had an opportunity to, to pick up some equity in a, in a computer company, computer retailer at the time. Um, and then after that, got, got out of that business and was looking for something to do. Didn't feel like I was doing anything. But at the time, I registered a domain name like in 1996. If you look it up, it was actually, this is another example of where you don't have to get it right. That particular domain name was onlineconsulting.com. And... Um, Later on, I would rebrand my business, but as you'll see, but at that time, I did that. I did something. And from that, I got this like, idea. It was basically a hobby. I'd always been interested in personal development. You know, I had, if I can borrow this seat, I'd sat in the chairs just like this a bunch, and I just sat there with bated breath and just couldn't wait to hear what they, people had to share. And so it was an interest of mine. A number of the people that you are here with today sharing their stories. Those were people that I knew through their books and tapes. And so I had this idea, which I thought was, I never had any grand illusion that it was gonna be a business. It goes to show, life has a funny way of filling the details, doesn't it? <laughs> so, but at the time I never had a grand illusion it was gonna be that, but I was just doing something. Keep it in mind that my reality, at least a portion of my reality was that I still couldn't say what I wanted to say. I couldn't even, I mean, I couldn't get a part-time job answering, the, I mean, not only not answering the phone, I could, I could barely get a labor job or anything because that was the things that I was going through. So I started with this hobby, and all of a sudden, basically it was just a links page. It was really no content, no nothing to it. It was, just, it was literally, you went to the website, and you saw a name, and then, bam, you clicked the link, and you went to their website. There's no business to it. Um, but I was doing something. I was doing something. So around, around, not long after that, that, somebody at the Yahoo directory, this is before everybody Google searched, we had the Yahoo directory, and essentially it was a human beings that chose what was good and what was wasn't. I don't know to this day how they thought that was a good website, but anyway, they thought it was a good resource. All of a sudden you had an, a category at that time called self-improvement, and there were about 20 people in there. And somehow, the motivational mecca, as I called it at the time, made it in the website. And I was a, I mean, it was the craziest thing because basically at that point I was just burning the midnight hours creating links pages. Now one thing that I was doing that, that would actually turn out to be smart later on because I crafted a lot of real relationships out of it was that I would not just link to somebody. I would actually take the time and write them and, and say, hey, I've, I'm doing this, blah, blah, blah. And, and so I did end up making some relationships. One of those people that I met was Bob. We're talking about more than 10 years ago, you know, and I met him that way by saying, I enjoy what you do. This is an idea that I'm, that I'm working on. I'm going to share you with other people. Now, I'm sure like most people, I got a lot of no answers and what have you, but some people said, well, I think that's a great idea. But I think that the ones that 
were connected to that site were pretty surprised because when we got connected in Yahoo, we went and literally we started having millions of people overnight visiting the website. I say we like it was a big venture. It was me mostly burning a lot of midnight hours doing something the best I could do. You know, even when, I, even when something as simple as making a phone call, I'd take for, I couldn't do. But I was doing something. So again, I can't impress enough on you. You, you have to get one distinction. Because I've spoke to audiences, and sometimes, sometimes people say, well, the problem with that, Josh, is you did that at, at a time when the Internet was the Wild West, and, and that couldn't be done today. You, you did it at this time. Well, you can look at it that way, but that's completely ridiculous. Because I had more limitations. I shouldn't have been doing anything. It's just, it was just a situation where I was doing the best I could do. And, I, and, and life had a bigger plan for me and filled in the details. You know, and, and I leaned on my faith as well, very, very strong at different times. So, all of a sudden I got a business, except that I don't have a business because we had a bunch of links pages. So I started reaching out to the people that I liked their work and I said, hey, will you mind sharing articles and different things like that and content? All of a sudden we have a content-driven site. You got the one site and now I've gotten multiple ones and, and essentially, but I was, but the whole time I'm building this up, I'm still at a place in my life where it's a big deal, I mean, where it's a big deal to do normal business. Like, you know, when, I mean, who, who here doesn't agree that, you know, answering the phone is a, a pretty big deal if you want to run any kind of normal business? Is that pretty safe? Well, that was a, still a big deal for me. And so I was not living as large as I could. Well, what's funny is later on, so I, I was like, you know, I've got this message. I've been a student of personal development since I'm 15 years old. I've got a message that's worth hearing. I think it is, except that I got this limitation. Okay, I got this thing, this very real limitation. And Molly talked about this a little bit too. I've got these things that I, that, and I call them workarounds, which is essentially, I don't care what you want, in life. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be the obvious path and I'm not going to tell you that if you just start, if you get right down on your project, that it's, I'm not going to give you a time frame, but I'll tell you, you will always find, there is always a way to get to go over your obstacle, under your obstacle, or in my case, maybe you have to do all three or four in the process, but you'll get there. You can absolutely get there. And what you learn from these, all these incredible speakers, that the ones that haven't spoke yet and the ones that have, those are your tools. But here's what I want you to get from me, is that you can have all the tools in the world, but if you don't do the action, at the end of the day, you've got to look in the mirror. But here's what I also know. You have it within you. Every single one of you has a greatness in you that no matter what you're experiencing in your life, whether you choose to believe that you have a greatness or not, it's simmering under the surface. For some of you, you're at the peak of your game. You're at the top of your game, and you can see it. But you have a greatness in you. And I believe that you have an honor, you have a duty to honor that greatness. Not just for yourself, but your loved ones, your friends. And in my case, when I was doing the best that I could do for the millions of people that would eventually visit that ugly website and hopefully take that into their life and that would make an impact on their, in them in some way. So, I'll leave you with this thought. It is your life. You have the choice. And I hope you'll live big. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.